Hey everybody, time for another movie retrospective. This is a fucking weird one. Yeah, I can't believe I didn't know this one. <laughs> this, this is another one that kind of like, it's like the one we did last week, Alice Sweet Alice. This is one that's like, it's a really good movie, yeah. but it tends to like kind of fly under the radar. Yeah, it's by the same people that did like From Beyond and stuff, and it was right along the lines of that, but also kind of like Naked Lunch too. Yeah, it's pretty. Kind of reminds me of that. Cronenbergy, yeah. also. Yeah, it's a trip. <laughs> this is Society from 1989. Although I yeah. should say that it was released in Europe in 1989, and they fucking loved it over there. Yeah. They didn't release it in the U.S. until 1992. I guess that's why I didn't know about it. I was. And young. then it didn't do like. Yeah. It really got like kind of crappy reviews. Nobody went to go see it. It is like a very very weird movie. Yeah, it, I was in the army. That's why then. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. So I wouldn't have known about it, but um, you know, had it come out a few a uh, few years earlier, you know, before I had joined the army, my friends would have told me all about it because it fit right in with Reanimator and From Beyond. It's that same kind of tone. It didn't have, of course, you know, what's his name in it? Uh, what's the guy's name? It, uh, who played Who played uh, Herbert West? Yeah, uh, Jeffrey Combs. Yeah, it didn't have Jeffrey Combs in it, but you could tell it was. By yeah, the same. it's the very same. It's a very body horror. Yeah. Um, honestly, like I said, it seems like it kind of slips under the radar a lot of the times. Um, I think I first heard about it. I didn't see it at the time, but I first heard about it like um, it comes up on a lot of like horror movie lists with like you know craziest yeah. and or grossest endings yeah. and shit like that, and rightly so. Yeah. <laughs> so I finally got to see it on yeah. Shutter because Shutter added it yeah. several months ago, and I finally got around to watching it. Every one of these, every one of the movies that came from this movie kind of had some kind of body horror type gimmick or some kind of gimmick to it. Some kind of hook, you know. Yeah. And the hook in this one, incest. Incest. Um, among many other yeah, things. Yeah, and a bunch of other stuff too. <laughs> incest. Fucking with your mind. I have you know to tell I mean? you right it, now though, yeah. it's like, okay, so if you haven't seen this movie, <laughs> go get Shudder and watch it because yeah. you can't talk about this movie without spoiling it. Yeah. You just can't. It's just yeah. like one of those movies. Like, this movie is bonkers yeah it's the end weird. of it is fucking bonkers yeah it and, reminds uh, me of that lovecraft movie one that had jeffrey combs with all the damn weird shit that happened especially when at the end when they go down and they had the damn fucking weird bats what Alien. necronomicon necronomicon it brian kind of, yeah, well this is the same director oh is it okay well, there director. you go there yeah, I was go. gonna say this was directed by yeah. Brian Yuzna, uh, okay. which horror fans will know. He's collaborated with Stuart Gordon. Uh, he yeah. co-wrote like some of the Reanimator films and produced the first Reanimator, and also like wrote and directed Bride of Reanimator. Um, you know, so him and Stuart Gordon were big buddies. Now, Society was actually his first uh, movie, his directorial debut. He was like a writer and producer on a bunch of other stuff. He went on to, like I said, he went on to direct very famously Bride of Reanimator, Return of the Living Dead 3, also another yeah. rad movie. We need to do that one of these days. Yeah. Necronomicon. He also did Beyond Reanimator, yeah. uh, which we reviewed. We reviewed Necronomicon, too, I think. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. did. But this was his first movie. Yeah, all these movies kind of fit right in. Yeah. Not so much Castle Freak. No, but, but that was Stuart Gordon, though. But yeah, like I said, they're they're, they're kind of unrelated. Aesthetics could, are very similar. You could tell that Castle Freak is not part of this, but to me, this is part of all the Reanimator and From Beyond and all the yeah. It, it, it has that tone. This I would it call it. I guess it's it, it's like a horror comedy, but it's more of a satire. Um, it's kind of more along the lines. Thematically, it's very similar to like They Live yeah. or Parents. Or yeah. Invasion of the Body Snatchers. A yeah. little bit of Stepford Wives. It's just everything, yeah. A um, little bit of Dead and Buried. It has, like, a little bit of that kind of vibe, too, where, like, yeah. a person coming in town and, like, everyone is, you know, everyone is, like, in on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, like, this really good, like, paranoid kind of thing. Yeah. And, like, really, like, other than, like, the batshit ending, yeah. pretty much the first, like, hour, hour, ten minutes of it is kind of like a mystery, like a paranoid kind of mystery. Yeah. Rich people. Yeah, so you get, like, the main character, whose name is uh, Bill Whitney, I think his name is. Yeah, he's played by Billy Warlock, who actually later went on to be on, like, Baywatch. And before this, he'd been on Days of Our Lives, which I thought was very funny. Are we getting into spoilers? Yeah, I said that before. I said there's no way to talk about this movie Yeah, so might as well check out, you know, (laughs) because now's the time to Like I said, it's on Shudder. Go watch it. Yeah. (laughs) And then go back. Because you can't talk about it without spoiling it. You just can't. Weird-ass movie. And it's, even if you show pictures of it, like, even the fucking cover kind of spoiled it. Yeah. Like, some of the DVD covers and shit like that. I think Arrow, uh, Arrow Blu-ray just put out a really nice uh, Blu-ray set that has, imagine like, the comic from, book and everything. It's kind of like, imagine if From Beyond was a porno movie, and it kind of was already. 
<laughs> it kind of was, yeah. yeah from if beyond, you like From Beyond, then, you'll, you're love then, this, then yeah. you'll be totally into this if you yeah. haven't seen it. But yeah, so the main character, whose name is Bill Whitney, now he lives in Beverly Hills with his, you know, snooty-ass parents and his, like, beautiful blonde sister and all this other kind of shit. He has, like, they just bought him a Jeep. He's, like, really popular at school. He's a basketball player. He's on the debate team, blah de blah And yet, he still feels like something is a little off. You know yeah. what I mean? So he's like, you know, initially it's they set it up, and maybe I'm I'm not sure if Brian Yesna did this on purpose, but the fact that he cast like a soap opera actor and um, you know, one of the women in it later on, like the woman that plays Clarissa, that dark haired woman that yeah. kind of gets interested. She was like a Playboy uh, playmate. Yeah. So I think he kind of did that on purpose to yeah. kind of give it this veneer of like eighties teen yeah. comedy, like and, and, a glossy and in a weird so way. So he could subvert it. And in a weird way it's coming at you like back to the future. Feels like Marty McFly. It is. And, he is and, kind and, of like like Michael J. Fox. He is and, very Michael J. Fox Yeah, day. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed, like, even his voice is the same, and some of yeah. his like facial expressions. Yeah. He doesn't super look like him, but some of the faces if, that he makes. Imagine if Marty McFly got sucked into a damn paranormal porno movie, <laughs> like Taboo One or Taboo Three, all about incest and shit. That's what the shit's like. All about incest. Yeah. <laughs> but the Man. yeah, so he starts to think something is off. He's like talking to his therapist about yeah. it. Like he thinks maybe he's adopted. Like he just feels like alienated, like from his family. Now, as I said, it's almost the first hour of it almost plays out as like a teen comedy, but with like a little bit of a mystery element to it, too. Mm -hmm. um, it's shot almost like a soap opera, like a teen comedy, but there's like little weird, you know, little weird hints that maybe something is not entirely right in this supposedly idyllic life that this teenage boy is leading. It's like, for example, like he comes home one day and he has this sister and his sister's name is Jenny, which is, you know, obviously also my name, but she doesn't look anything like me. But, um, so there's this weird, like, almost, like, sexual tension between the two of them, like, even from the beginning, so you're like, oh, that's a little uncomfortable, like, you know, they don't, like, super, it's not, like, super in your face. No, but they're not acting like brother and sister. Really. They're really not, no. no. Um, yeah. Before I even saw what was coming, I'm looking at him and going, like, I don't buy that as a brother and sister. Yeah. Just, but there's a reason for I was that. Like, yeah, I, I, thought, I thought it was just bad acting. I was like, you know, I thought well, it was like bad acting. See, I, was like, I am That's one of the people, because, because some of the things, and I've, and I've read and, like, seen a lot of uh, reviews of this. And some people said, oh, the acting's bad and stuff like that. I don't necessarily think that's the case because, like I said, this is a satire. Yeah. Um, and it was written as a satire. So I kind of feel like he almost wanted, not necessarily bad acting, but he wanted... Um, nobody you know, acts natural. Nobody acts naturally right. because... And there's a reason for that, like, later yeah, on in the movie. So I think later. they're setting it up. Oh, yeah. It was a setup. I mean, I was watching it going, like, boy, that's bad acting because I can tell those two are fucking... Yeah. <laughs> but I thought I was just seeing through the acting. You know what I'm talking about? No, that's not so, what it is. I thought it was just, you know what I mean, this dude forgot to act. You know what I mean? Because he's been knocking that down. Yeah. I can tell. But then it comes out where, yeah, this is an incest theme and shit. You know what I mean? It just, you'll, you you just got to see it to understand it. Yeah, that's And it's what I not mean. normal. No. It's not normal, no. Yeah, and like I said, so there's like little hints that are like, like his parents, who are like really weird, and um, so they're, like, out in the garden, like, talking to their gardener. And the gardener has, like, this tray with all these slugs on it. And he's, like, picking them up with chopsticks. And, like, the parents are, like, looking at them going, oh, this is a nice crop we have this year. Yeah, so, yeah. so it's, like, just creepy shit like that, right? Yeah. Then, like, he goes, um, like, Billy goes into the bathroom. Like, he, he's looking for the suntan lotion or something like that. And his sister is in the shower and you see her in the shower, like, through the frosted glass, but it looks like her head's on backwards. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, there's these big fake titties and, like... Yeah, up against the glass. And everything shit. like that, but her head is, like, turned that way, and he's like, what the fuck? And you then, like, he like opened it, but it's normal. Titties are on the back. Yeah. Yeah. So, tits and ass on the same side. It's, right. it's Which very Which, some nice. say, evolutionary-wise, evolutionary, evolutionary -wise, the titties are on the back. <laughs> that ass is supposed to look like titties, and the titties are supposed to look like ass. The I've way a woman looks, go looks good to a man coming and going. <laughs> That's the, I think that's evolutionarily the idea. Now we also need tits on the side, so we can also look good from the side. Put tits on the tits. So the tits have tits. <laughs> Titception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's going to be the future of implants. A girl gets implants, and then the implants get implants. 
like damn scoops you heard of it ice, here first yeah like scoops of ice cream and shit a bikini's gotta have <laughs> bikini's it's gotta have multi-layered scoop. and shit you know what i mean Their bra's got like three sets of cups <laughs> different size you know some I of the real you. freaky women the cups get bigger as they added <laughs> I, see, I could see that happen. <laughs> yeah, that's in the future, though. That's in the future. Okay. That's, this that's, this people, is Nostra Thomas over yeah, here. Yeah, that's to... way in the future. That's like 200 years from the future when these freaky motherfuckers start doing stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Just like tits with like a bunch of yeah, other tits. like on dicks top of having them. dicks. <laughs> I mean, we already got a lot of dicks running around with dicks. But we're talking about the dick itself has another dick on it. The dick on itself it. has another dick yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah. Like right. I said, it's like a, it's like an endless like yeah. recursion of dicks. Yeah, hypersexuality. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so there's these little hints that like there's some weird shit going on. And then it turns out uh, the sister, Jenny, is having her coming out party, which was, I guess, was a thing that Mon society out. people yeah, come on out. did. Like, you know, it's like, that's oh, like old school shit. That's old school rich people stuff, I yeah. guess. They introduce her to like society, like, oh, you're allowed to date her now. Yeah, and... we're taking the veil off of her. Yeah. <laughs> Unlock the doors. She can come out Break now. Break the seal. <laughs> yeah, she, she's available. <laughs> She's going to have to pay up first, though. Dowry. <laughs> Give us some sheep and goats and shit yeah. like that. But yeah, so uh, so it turns out that they're having this coming out party, and Billy can't go because he has some big basketball game or some shit like that. But it turns out that uh, Jenny's ex-boyfriend, who has kind of been stalking her a little bit, and you think, like, what a, what a scumbag, but later on you find out why, she, he has actually put, like, a secret microphone like or something, like, in her earring, so she's been wearing earrings and like recording everything. So this co- so this guy comes to Billy and is like, "You need to listen to this shit right now." And plays him a tape of Jenny's coming out party, and it sounds like everyone's having a big incestuous orgy, like not just the parents fucking the daughter, but also the daughter fucking pretty much everybody, everybody fucking the daughter, everybody fucking everybody. And then there seems to be like a guy screaming, and there's like all these weird like suction noises and stuff. And Billy's like, "What the?" fuck is going on like what are they doing yeah. and all this other kind of shit and then he starts thinking they must have been eating slugs yeah yeah so he so he goes and he tells his um therapist dr cleveland about this and he's like no i'm right you know Bla- this guy blanchard his friend who was his uh sister's ex-boyfriend it's like he recorded this li- you know you got to listen to this now the doctor was like i'm not gonna listen to it right now i'll listen to it and i promise and stuff like that now when billy comes back the next day the tape is totally innocuous. It's just like a regular party. Yeah. Like, oh, isn't everything lovely and blah, yeah. blah, blah. And so Billy starts thinking... That he's going crazy. That he's losing his yeah. mind. You know what I mean? So I, I really like like the buildup of this. Because, I, I, you know, some people that reviewed it say it's like, oh, you know, it takes a long time. Like, Because the ending of it is just so batshit crazy that it takes like too long to build up to that. But I really like like the first hour where it's like this paranoid thing where it's like Billy actually thinks he might be losing his mind because it seems like he's seeing all this stuff but then when he goes back to you know like he goes back to listen to the tape or the doctor plays in the tape and it's totally normal and he's like what the fuck like how did I hear this other kind of shit so then he tries to go to Blanchard like to get another copy of the tape and when he gets there there's like been a big car accident and supposedly Blanchard is dead so there's like all this nefarious. So it seems like everybody's in on this shit, but him. It's like some paranoia, like Rosemary's Baby type action yeah. going on, where everybody's in on the joke. You right, know what I mean? Him. Except for him. Right. So, like I said, for the first like hour, you're thinking that either he's going crazy or everybody's in on yeah. shit. Um, now he also meets this, like I said, this play Playboy playmate. She's not. She is in real life. She wasn't in the movie. Named Clarissa. And one of the funniest things about this is that her mom, for some reason, and they don't ever really explain this, her mom is like this big, gigantic mountain of a woman who kind of looks like Tammy Faye, like with the makeup kind of shit and kind of looks like a really bad drag queen. And also, and also doesn't talk. She's a mute, Um, maybe kind of mentally impaired. Not entirely sure on that. Also eats hair and coughs up hairballs. That's right. Yeah. And the shit that she does, it's weird. So... Anyway, I, I kind of thought they were all aliens. They are not aliens. Okay. Because, I mean, specifically... Okay, so... After all that kind of shit happens, they kind of fake Billy's death and all this other kind of stuff. So when, when he gets back to the house um, and you discover, like, what the big secret is behind, quote-unquote, society... 
is that basically all of these rich people that live in Beverly Hills and are, and everything like that are they're not aliens because the the head of them who's like judge whatever the hell his name is he specifically says that we're not from outer space or anything like that it's like we've been here as long as you have or we've been oh, here okay. longer than you have That's so right. they're a different species, like a subspecies essentially of subspecies of human and but because of like good breeding, yeah, they're so, they're making a they're making a metaphor about like the rich being a different species yeah, than before, yeah, right? Yeah, I and that they that. and that the rich are like eating yeah, and them. they were like having sex, and they would all kind of like merge in into one body, kind of like they were a big old bunch of like an amoeba. Yeah, and then weird stuff had happened, and guys would pop out, dead, <laughs> guys' ass would pop out. He's talking out his ass. And talking <laughs> to his it's fucking bizarre. It kind of was kind of like. Uh, Kind of, it's kind of like that part. Kind of reminded me of Naked Lunch. Now, yeah. Now here's the thing. Seeing it now, I just thought it was bizarre, kind of funny. Yeah. I would have liked to have seen it back in the day that it came out, yeah. like in '92 or '89, evidently when yeah. it first came out, or because I think it would have had a little bit of a different impact on you back then. <clears throat> yeah. Because you know, I've seen so much shit now, nothing really surprises right. you. Uh, but I think how that series from those that director and everything, how it built up, that probably was the logical next step in the yeah. progression to, to, to the, that series of movies that he was making. Yeah. And I would have liked to have seen it on, on the time, in the time in which it would had been yeah. released. Because I couldn't, pro I don't think I was really kind of getting the proper context, the cultural context. Yeah. And and I, I don't I barely remember what ninety two was like. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was in the army, so I didn't I wasn't a civilian then, so I don't know what kind of cultural impact it would have had. They said that it didn't make a cultural impact that it was Well no but I think what it's it just, is, is it they was, were I think they were actually revolted by it. I can see that. That's probably what happened. I have to say the practical effects in this, which were done uh, by Screaming Mad George, who's a Japanese fellow. Who had also done many other uh, yeah, very cool. famous. He is uh, very famous for doing like these kind of surrealistic gore effects, which is yeah. why they wanted him for this. Uh, the special effects in this, you know, a lot of the stuff. This was made in 1989, so a lot of the fashions it's are very dated. It's very, yeah. very 80s and stuff. But the effects in this are amazing. <laughs> yeah, they're they're good, I and mean, you can tell that they're special <laughs> effects. And right, it's not real, but but they really are there. Yeah, it's not CG. And you know, it's a bunch of latex and stuff, and it, they did a good job. I mean, it still looks like. Pretty awesome, especially I think. for the budget. It's a low budget movie. Oh yeah. Um, now you can tell that the uh, that a lot of the inspiration for the effects um, came from like you know Bosch paintings. Yeah. Um, they one of them said they they were using as inspiration the Dolly painting, the Great Masturbator. <laughs> um, so it, it's almost kind of like this vision of hell where there's like these yeah. all these people and a lot of them are like kind of middle-aged or like older people they're all standing around in their underwear they call it the shunting by the way that's the name of the thing that they're doing okay and um so so you get like these shots of just like all these bodies and they're like just meshing together there's like yeah. all this drippy latex like and melting. it's like and they're melting into it. and they and what they do is they take these quote unquote you know poor people because it turns out that Billy is not their biological child uh he was taken in by them yeah. as so he would be a sacrifice later on they were almost okay. like growing him that was oh, what oh. they meant with the slugs All they're right. like oh it's a good crop this year they raised them yeah. in their you know yeah, so milieu it's a, there so it's an allegory of what really happened out on epstein's island <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, like I said, That's it could exactly be seen what, as that. It's a yeah. satirical takedown yeah. of, like, you know, the rich people and how they're, like, sucking abusing off people. the poor and they're, like, abusing yeah. the poor. Yeah. So Sexually and, 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 and socially, I guess. And yeah. in this case, like, yeah. they're kind of literally absorbing that. Yeah, absorbing them, yeah. So it's, like, the, the it's one guy... It's kind of like a backwards thing. You now the thing can fucking... Yeah. Take thing, you know, people, they're mesh it, melting together. They're they, all melting together. Yeah. I mean, there is, like, some crazy, like, fucking Boschian yeah. imagery in this. Like I said, they're, this kid, because Blanchard is the one that gets it first... Because uh, it's him and Billy, and they're at this at the shunting party, and the, they're going to get absorbed. So Blanchard gets absorbed, gets absorbed first, and then like they're all just gathering around him, and they're just like starting to suck around yeah. and everything like that. 
And then the judge, this old man, and he's like in a whole bunch of movies, that actor. Yeah. And it's like, man, fair play to him because everybody committed to this shit as fucking yeah. weird as it is. He takes his fucking fist, shoves it up Blanchard's ass. Yeah. The hand comes out. Of yeah, that's his right. Mouth. Yeah, forget about that. <laughs> now it's not really up in the ass, people. It's, it's, it's all it's a latex dummy so you know well i did that it is like obviously enough. they didn't fist someone right in the ass for this movie that'd be awesome though. but it, it well yeah <laughs> but yeah it's like so there's just yeah. like just, just these fucking great gags man it's like the, yeah. you know when billy goes up and he sees his mom and she j- just see her top half at the arms but then where her legs are there's other arms and then yeah. like she's walking the arms then she bends over and like the daughter's yeah. face comes out of her ass or her pussy or yeah, whatever yeah. and then like the dad just has his, like, his ass and the face is like his yeah. face is in the middle Some of his weird ass optical and and stuff. <laughs> like that it's just the craziest fucking shit ever yeah and it's like I think um, it's as if the thing was a porno movie. It is very much like that. It is it is very thing like. It's very yeah. Rob Bottin. But like I yeah. said, it was Screaming Mad George who did the effects, and they're just like they're disgusting and yeah. delightful. And you have never seen anything like this. I I, I can assure you, it's bizarre. And uh, yeah. I think Billy at the end too. He's fighting with uh, that other that other douchebag yeah. that's like his and age, Ted, this... whatever. And he he does the same thing where he sticks his hand all the way up the dude's ass, he grabs his mouth, he and then pulls his, him and out. then he pulls him completely inside, inside out. out. <laughs> and imagine all this—it's ha- amazing. And all this is happening in a movie that's kind of like Back to the Future. <laughs> yeah, or like or like Dynasty or Falcon yeah, Crest yeah, or something yeah. like one of those nighttime soap yeah, operas. It's, crazy. it's just the craziest shit you've ever seen. Yeah. And like I said, it's that's kind of what's so cool about it. And it's I know that's kind of like a cult classic nowadays. And like I said, Era just had like a big, really fancy like two disc Blu Ray release with like a comic book and everything like that. Um, but I do feel like this is one that kind of gets forgotten about. As famous as Brian Yesna is, particularly for working on the Reanimator films, and shit, him and Stuart Gordon even did Honey I Shrunk the Kids for fucking yeah. Disney. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. When you think about that. But this is, you know, this being his first movie, and as notorious as the like the last twenty minutes of it are, you would think that it would be better known, but I guess it it kind of isn't. I think it just went over the top for ninety two. I, I guess it was something that they didn't want they didn't want the public to see. I guess. Maybe maybe it made the wrong people mad. Yeah, made, it's just made rich people mad. They go, don't we don't show. Them I that. guess is it well? It's just like really funny to yeah. me because, like I said, it was released three years earlier in Europe, yeah. and it got like all, it got really really positive reviews. Like especially in the UK, like they fucking loved it. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? And it's just it's very funny to me that it took so long to come out over here, and then it just cut. You know, it went over like a wet fart, pretty much. Yeah. Which you know, really weird. And like I said, it's. It's not like there wasn't other satirical horror. I mean, people had done They Live. There was a, there was a lot of them in the 80s, particularly. Yeah. Um, you know, shit like street trash and stuff like that. But I don't know. For some reason, this one just didn't... Maybe just because the ending was just way too gross or weird for people. I don't know. I mean, the end of it is really super crazy like and it. nightmarish. I guess not. They didn't like But seriously, if, <laughs> if you haven't seen this movie, you need to see it. Because... It's trip. the Yeah, it's really trippy. It's, it's trip. like... This one review I was reading of it was so funny. It's like, who's, who put acid in my milk? It's like fucking yeah. sneaky Brian Yesna did. That's yeah. exactly it. It's just, it's like a Bosch painting come to life. But even like before that, it's kind of like a cool, like little build up, little paranoia mystery type of thing. So if you like these kind of like conspiracy, paranormal, you know, paranoia, uh, you know, type of movies where, and, and also you got to like body horror because I have to, I'm, if you're squeamish, the end of it's pretty fucking gross. I'm not going to lie. So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's on Shudder at the moment. So you should probably go check it out if you haven't seen it, even though we just spoiled the whole thing. But we did warn you. So I'm just yeah. telling you. All right. So we will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>